You said in an email to us that you quit being a photographer. Yeah. What, like a few years back or what happened? Um, I've had a very successful career as a photographer and I directed music videos and some branded content for commercials. But I just got tired of how people treated um, photographers and other artists and taking advantage and some of the really the antics from the record labels and different clients. And so I got so frustrated, but I also had an agency at the time who was pushing my work. And I've never, um, I've never done very well with agents. I normally know how to promote myself the best, right? And I got so frustrated and my agent kept, but I take accountability for all of it, right? So um, he was saying, shoot more like this photographer. Try shooting this person. Um, there were certain people that I had, I allowed them to twist my arm. And I, I, I'm big on accountability. Because then when I accomplish something, I can take all the credit too, right? But um, so they influenced me to change myself and change my style that wasn't me. Um, there was a lot of just grin and bear it. There was a lot of um, politics and stuff, and there always has been. And it just reached a point, a boiling point, plus so many photographers working for free, plus cameras coming down in price but becoming so much better, and the market flooding with creatives you know, that wanted to take pictures. And so I just got frustrated, and I thought, I put everything on hold. I put, you know, for my quote unquote normal job friends, they've all have their families and their homes and um, and I put everything on hold and I thought, for what? For this? And I I started questioning if I was even an artist anymore. And that once I did that, did I notice everything? It, it, it was a gradual downhill to it just went straight down. Once I questioned if I was an artist anymore. And um, I opened a 5,000 square foot photo studio in Lincoln Heights. And I thought, you know what, if budgets are shrinking and if people aren't hiring photographers and I'm not booking as much anymore because I wasn't booking because I tried to mimic a few other photographer styles per my agent's recommendation. And so I let go of who I was and what really helped my career build, right? And so, um, I just got really tired of it and I opened the photo studio and I thought I'll just make some money from that line item, the location, you know, th that budget and try to figure it out. So I put my camera down, I wasn't interested, I lived off of savings, I ran a studio, um, mopped to 5,000, I had no idea how long it takes to mop 5,000 square feet, okay, or to sweep or to, you know, just to do anything. And um, I just wasn't interested in photography anymore. And then um, I had a few jobs here and there. I said no to most jobs. They didn't interest me anymore. And that's what scared me the most. So um, I started, I'm a big believer of, am I talking too much on it? No, no, no okay, I okay. just wanted to ask you just real quick. Sorry, yeah. What scared you about the fact that you weren't interested? Because, okay, so what scared me the most that I was no longer interested in photography is that I banked everything on this. And it was, and I'm, I, this I'm not very proud of, but I'm often introduced by my work and by the people that I have worked with. So, oh, hey, this is Walid. He just shot for Mariah Carey. This is Walid. He just shot so and so, right? And so my identity was tied to it. So I lost. So I lost personal and I lost professional. And that's what really, really scared me. And that's what um, set me back on a track of like, I got to redo this. I got to hit the reset button. And one of the things that helped me get back on it was the help of um, initially, I mean, a, f a handful, but now thousands of strangers. So I started a secret Instagram account where I anonymously started an account called How to Photograph. And the name is kind of dorky it's like pet mart you know it, it wasn't like a cool name but i was like okay it's available let's just do it and i started helping photographers not repeat my mistakes but repeat my accomplishments so every day i gave them something and the first follower was me i mean i followed from my personal account 
And then I noticed, I'm like, oh, another person just followed me. Then another one. And it was like five. I'm like, yeah, like now there's seven, you know. And I started giving them business tips and motivational tips and lighting tips and composition and marketing and everything. And I was anonymous. And people kept saying, they're like, who is this? And I think after about 5,000 or 7,000 followers, um, a friend of mine said, maybe you should start putting your name on it because you actually have a portfolio that will validate the work that you've been doing, you know, or that your advice that you're giving people. And I would give them advice on DM and I would give them advice on um, long comments and everything. And so it attracted these good people that wanted that kind of advice and they wanted that kind of community. And I'm, I, I don't know the exact number, but about 10 or 12,000 maybe. I said, oh, my name is Walid. Here's what I've done. And by this time, about eight months had passed. For eight months, I put my camera down and I started picking up the camera again because helping other people made me love photography again. And that's what I almost forgot to say. So it was, you asked a simple question, I gave you 20 minutes of an answer. So there you go. Well, I mean, life life yeah. isn't um, simple, but, but yeah. it sounds like, you know, you. one thing that was really interesting that you said was that you, you put, quote, your life like on hold where you saw your other friends do this, quote, like normal nine to five. Do you think when I hear that, I, I always wonder, do you know that that's already not in you? You know, because I think it takes us, there's a lot of pressure around people that go into that life if they don't totally want it and they kind of don't follow what they really want to do. So do you think that maybe that was never in you? I don't think it's in me still even. Yeah, and that's a good point. And actually, I was driving down Pasadena, uh, uh, Colorado and Pasadena, and there's a Trader Joe's that I pulled into randomly. And I don't I don't live in Pasadena. I don't go there, but I just did. And I remember walking in. It was the week of Christmas and I saw people um, I saw people, it was like a movie scene because it was so, f it seemed so fake and staged, but I walked in and I saw two cashiers looking at each other and laughing. I saw the customer laughing and I saw some guy pushing like a, like a bakery basket and he, as he moved past me, he exposed like the manager holding the ladder for the artist. It was like such a fake scene, but it was real life and I remember looking and feeling so sad and so down because I thought, you know what? I don't have community. I don't have anyone to laugh with. It's just me editing behind a, um, a monitor or shooting, or it's me putting a shoot together. And it's a small moment, but most of it is in post-production or marketing or whatever. And I just felt so sad. So um, I think I miss, I've, I've had a, a regular job, I guess, before, but I think I miss going into an office, this anchor in your life that I'm going to see them, I'm going to see them at their desk, same jokes, same office, let's lose weight parties and, you know, <laughs> bake goods and all that right. stuff. I miss community. Right. Yeah, it's having your own business is definitely very it's lonely. lonely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. Um, I mean, but it's great then, too, though. Sure, yeah. because then you have a freedom that that world doesn't necessarily have. And they're not as free to put stuff on Twitter that they feel about whatever situation is going on in society. They have to watch, you know, that there's 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 a different set of rules. Yeah. And and maybe some people are okay with that. And, and maybe some people do it because they have a family and they want to support them. Yep. And that makes sense. Yep. When you saw these other photographers come into your space, your 5,000 square foot space, yeah. Did that invigorate you? Did you see in them kind of because maybe they were at a newer stage or no? Did, did, were you not invigorated by them? Yeah, I mean, I mentioned the 5,000. That wasn't to show off. That was more to be like, I cannot believe I had to sweep that every other day because it was a warehouse, right? But I saw other photographers coming in and um, very few invigorated me. So I actually never thought about it until you just asked the question. Very few invigorated me vast majority had terrible lighting that was sit there I'm like I would never do that you know like put a silk up or something you know um, but I'm that's not my job to tell them how to create so I watched people do that and I watched it wasn't I think that I was so deep in my I was I was in a 
depressive state that I was so just deep into it and I was just like watching productions come and go. And I had big movies. I had Ava Longoria film a movie in there and you know, um, a lot of great commercials. There's a Super Bowl commercial out of my studio, you know? So I watched a lot of stuff, but most of it I was just floating, not present, visiting craft services every two minutes. <laughs> Literally, like it was just not, I was, I was just a hollow person for those, for that era, yeah. You had photographed so many A-less talent. You had been on stage photographing, you know, like didn't you look out into a sea of people and you saw like thousands of people yeah, at yeah, concerts? Yeah. Most people would pay to be there. Yeah. And then to think, and I've heard this from other people that have reached incredible like success, that it did, it felt hollow. Yeah. So then how did you end up turning things around so that you found a meaning in it? I started helping people. And I started helping people because um, one of the reasons why I got so frustrated was people pushing me. I mean, like my, my old agent sent me a postcard in the mail that said um, that was for a personal trainer and said, maybe this is why you're not booking as much and told me to lose weight. I oh, was within wow. three to four pounds of where I'm at right now. You know, I mean, yes. I First of all, you look great. I well, mean, I know you. we're only I'm wearing for... black. That's oh, why. okay. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's becoming. So thank you. Um, but but the fact that there's that pressure for a photographer and and like a quote celebrity photographer, really. So what does a female go through in front of the camera? You know, it made me a lot more, a lot more aware, and of just how I moved, how I spoke to people, and I, and the impact that I left on people. Um, it made me, but I think helping other photographers and people were anon, they would help this anonymous figure. Uh, sorry, they would leave comments for this anonymous person online. They're like, "Thank you so much for helping me." People would say, "Hey, I have a shoot. I have a headshot shoot. I'm brand new. Um, which lens do I get?" And I'd say, "Well, get this. If the background is ugly, do this and whatever." I would just tell them. I would just. It helped me so much to help other people that I started liking photography again and I started seeing um, newer photographers get that little glimmer in their eyes that I had. And so just being submerged with those people and just watching them and they didn't know who I was so they weren't like, oh, I love your work. There was none of that. They were just thankful. That's what really, really helped me. Just helping other people and I started getting and then um, what was the exact question? The exact question was, Walid, in an email, <laughs> you said three years ago you quit being a photographer. Yeah. What happened? That was it. I mean, that's. I, I got tired of the industry. I got tired of people scamming artists. I think that when you scam artists, it's an extra, extra dose of bad karma for you because these are the most honest, open people. Like artists are supposed to make you feel things, whether they write music or a book or take a picture or dance for you. It's just like, they're the most sincere beings on this planet, next to like children and elderly, you know? And when you screw over an artist, I get, it infuriates me. And so that was, I felt like there was a lot of times that I was just really acting innocent and I realized some of these people in these big meetings were taking advantage. So I was like, you know what? You're not gonna be doing that to anybody else. Not anyone that comes across me, I'm gonna make sure that I help them. So that's what grew the following and grew this massive project that I'm on now. Do you think artists unconsciously or consciously allow themselves to be taken advantage of because they know how competitive it is and they're, they're desperate? I mean, there is a desperation. You're between jobs. That is sort of the nature of the beast around here. It's one job yeah. to the next. No, that's a great question, and also, yes, to answer your question, for sure. And I think also um, there's a lot of people that feel you have to struggle or you're not a real artist. Oh, interesting. That you're just not, I, I think that there's a struggle envy. So what, you know, because if you think about it, you think about, um, before we started filming, we talked about like the impact that Madonna has had on music and females and just uh, um, the social climate. Right. And then, even though like another artist might, so we'll celebrate that. We'll celebrate that she was in New York City and almost homeless and you right. know, we'll celebrate that. But somebody else whose sibling might have been very famous and then they became famous because of that, you're like, that's nice, sure. keep singing. We're not that impressed, you know? 
or even like let's say U2, the band U2, mm-hmm. they were like this angry young Irish sort of like, you know, and they, they had a lot of like political beliefs. Yeah. And I'm not saying their music's not great now, yeah. but I think there is something very interesting when somebody comes from that, that that's like this uprising, and I think you're, you're more likely to gravitate yeah. than if you knew you were someone's son or daughter, and I'm not saying they're not equally talented, but when you know that they've had to really like claw to get somewhere. Oh, I think Americans love a good climbing story, you know, <laughs> yeah, and we true. love it, yeah. but I think we get, then we also love to throw people off the throne too and just get a high off of that. Yeah, that is, that yeah. is also true. 